Hi children, lesson number one, introduction to history. What is history? It is a systematic presentation of past events. It introduces the journey of human beings. It tells the failures and success of humans in that journey. Historical incidents, the accuracy of time, place and person is maintained likely when the incident took place, where and by whom. So, without these clarities, history becomes a story. Difference between history and story. Just look at these examples. Story. Once upon a time, there was a king in a palace. He fought a war. The same in the history is Ashoka, who ruled Pataliputra in 261 BCE, fought the Kalinga War. What do you observe here? In story, there is no time, no place and no name. But here, name, place and time was given. That means, history tells the name, place, etc. Story tells nothing. Why we want history? Children, see, as a memory, recollection and retention. Memory serves human to survive. So does history serves as a memory for a society, state, nation and whole world. History is a record of good and wrong decisions, joyful and sorrowful experiences and difficulties faced by the ancestors. It warns about future decisions making process. Understand children, this is so why we want history. And once again I am telling you children, you please repeatedly watch this video then only you can understand. Right? Next, the principles, values and ideologies of our ancestors in the history will be a model and guiding forces for their descendants. Valor, adventures, patriotism and sacrifices will inspire the next generations. And by introducing our culture and heritage, history arouses the feeling of pride and honor for our nation and the world at, age, at large. Because of all these reasons, we need history. We want history. The reasons are these things. Once again, you read. Father of history. Herodotus of Greece was the first to show the world how to construct his immensely valuable history. Hence, he is considered as the father of history. So, look at so the picture. Sources of history. Literary sources and archaeological sources. Right? What are literary sources? Historically speaking, literature means the written or orally conveyed information. There are two kinds in this. One is written literature and another is oral literature. Written literature can be further classified into native and foreign literature. Oral literature means com comprises of folk songs, stories, ballads, myths and legends. So written literature is constructed by literates but oral literature is created by illiterates. There is a difference. So literary sources are two kinds, oral and liter uh, written. And second one is archaeological sources. The physical remains or ruins of the things used or the constructed structures in the past are archaeological sources. The remains that have been buried in the earth are removed through excavation. The historical evidences include coins, inscriptions, monuments, pieces of parts and other artifacts. These are the archaeological sources. Next, India has introduced by Europeans. Europeans. Indians had the knowledge of history in the form of Puranas and myths from ancient times. But uh, this was different from the European model of constructing history. Among the European, Europeans who arrived in India in 16th century were Jesuits, priests. They undertook a systematic study to understand the lifestyle of Indians. Uh, herein, Rich Roth, who was settled in Agra, translated Sanskrit grammar into Latin language about 350 years ago. So, like this way, India uh, introduced by Europeans, how we were. So, a century later, so Father Codex identified that there are many similarities between Sanskrit and European languages. Meanwhile, the British got the revenue rights in Bengal. The British officers tried to understand the history, traditions, customs, values, beliefs and laws of Indians to strengthen their trade relationship. Some administrators were attracted towards Indian literature and culture. As a result, Manusmriti, Bhagavad Gita and other great literary works were translated into English. So like this way, so we uh, we got history, so Indian history. Now, William Jones. Sir William Jones, 
contributed immensely to the study of Indology, the study of India. Understand? He came to India as a judge of the Supreme Court in Bengal and established the Asiatic Society in 1784 CE at Calcutta. Present it is Kolkata. Sir William Jones, who was a multilingual so expert, translated the great works like Gita Govinda, Manava Dharma Sastra, and Kalidasa's Shakuntala from Sanskrit to English. So, because of William Jones, then we are we came to know about our culture. Next, Max Muller, another prominent so orientalist and uh, Indologist was Max Muller. He was a German scholar who wrote an English work. Uh, sacred books of the East in 50 volumes so children you also read the textbook so page number so four and five about these people William Johnson Max Muller you just see the sources of history and all in the page number next one so James Mill James Mill a historian from Scotland wrote history of India in six volumes next one Abbe Dubious so, Abed Dubius, a French missionary, arrived and settled at a Ganjam near Sri Rangapatna. He lived as a says by adopting the local culture and customs. He was called Dodda Swami by the local people. He wrote Hindu manners, customs, and uh, ceremonies. He has presented Indian customs, values, thoughts, festivals, and Varnashrama system in his work. Abbe Dubius lived here for 24 years and returned to France. You understand? The foreigner came, the foreigner came here and uh, they were attracted by our culture and they maintained about so our good and bad culture of the history. And next one, apart from these Elfin, uh, Elphinstones, Clo Coles, Brooke, Cunningham, Elliot and Davinson have introduced the different stages of Indian history. So Francis Birchman, so then Colonel Wilkes, Mackenzie, Bill Rice, Fleet and other European scholars have successfully recorded and uh, preserved inscriptions, so manuscripts, uh, chronicles, testimonies and contemporary events for the reconstruction of Karnataka history also. See these people, these foreigners, so mention what were, so and how was India those times they recorded in their works hence we got all this information thus europeans have been successful in introducing a novel way of understanding and constructing history to the indians in this way they have provided indians a new process of thinking and a new perspective to construct history understand children that is the conclusion so these new words also you learn children jesuit missionary Indology, Orientalist. Jesuit means in 1534, uh, Ignatius Loyal established the Society of Jesus in Paris. This is a male religious congregation of the Catholic Church. The members of the Society of Jesus are known as Jesuit. Missionaries means the religious preachers who are sent to foreign country to spread Christian religion. Indology means the branch of knowledge or science which studies the culture and history of India. Orientalists the European scholars who are interested in the history, culture and spirituality of the Eastern countries. So these words you remember, then definitely it will be useful in the future. And here one more thing you need to observe is CE means common era. Uh, BCE means before common era. CE and BC are used in place of AD and BC. That is before Christ, after Christ, after death of the Christ. So it was, uh, these abbreviations are being used in the social science textbook nowadays. Before CE is called as okay AD and BC is called BC. Okay, so it was changed. So these uh, changes try to understand children. So CE common era, BC is before common era instead of before Christ and after death. So okay, children, you just uh, try to write the answers in the page number seven. So fill in the blanks, question and answers, and page number eight, uh, discuss in group and answers, and the fourth one match the following everything so do the all the activities write in the notes and send back to us one day definitely we will call you to the school and check right all the best